So here's example two of the assigning oxidation numbers topic. For the first species here, rule two will apply. In simple ions, the oxidation number is equal to the charge of the ion. So in this case, the charge of the ion is minus one, so the oxidation number would be minus one. Here we need to find the oxidation number of the nitrogen atom. Here's an, this is an ionic compound. We have KNO3. And in order to find the oxidation number of the nitrogen, let's work backwards. Let's work backwards from the oxygen. Because oxygen is normally has an oxidation number of minus two, except for in peroxides. This is not a peroxide. So each oxygen atom has, a, has an oxidation number of minus two. For a total, if I have three oxygen atoms and each one has an oxidation number of minus two, that's a total of minus six there. If I'm adding up the uh, algebraic sum of those oxidation numbers. Well, we could also look at potassium here. Because this is an ionic compound, this is potassium ion. Rule two applies. In simple ions, the oxidation number is the charge of the ion, plus one. I only have one potassium ion, so my sum there would be plus one from all of the K plus cations. So if I have plus one and minus six, that gives me a total right now of minus Five. The algebraic sum of the oxidation numbers for a neutral compound must be equal to zero. So that means that the oxidation number of nitrogen must be positive five. Let's add them up to see. If I take one, add that to positive five, and add that to negative six, I get zero. So the oxidation number for this nitrogen atom is positive five. Here, I've got iron three oxide. Well, I know just from the stock system that the Roman numeral three tells me what the oxidation state of that iron atom is. It'd be plus three. But if I want to do it the long way, I can look at the chemical formula, Fe2O3, work backwards from the oxygen, each oxygen atom has an oxidation number of minus two for negative six total. If I have two iron atoms, they must total plus six so that the algebraic sum of the oxidation numbers is zero. So each iron cation must have an oxidation number of plus three. Here I have the hydroxide ion and I have hydrogen and oxygen. So I have the hydroxide ion, OH minus, have hydrogen and oxygen, and they want the oxidation uh, number for this oxygen atom. Well, let's look at rule 3B. The oxidation number of hydrogen is plus one when bonded to nonmetals and minus one when bonded to metals. What is oxygen? Oxygen is a nonmetal. So the oxidation number for hydrogen here is plus one. So does that mean that the oxidation number for oxygen must be minus one? Because the algebraic sum of the oxidation numbers is zero for a neutral compound? No, because this is not a neutral compound. This is the, an ion. And number four also says that the algebraic sum of the oxidation numbers for an ion must be equal to the overall charge for an ion. In this case, plus one added to negative one is zero. We see here that the oxidation number of oxygen is normally minus two, except for in peroxide. This is not a peroxide. So because the sum of the oxidation numbers here must be equal to the charge, which is minus one, and because of this hint here, I know that, in fact, what I actually have is that minus one is the oxidation number for that oxygen atom, but minus two. Minus two plus one is equal to the charge of this ion. Minus two.